The northeast of Nigeria is a fabulous country of an ending beauty. It has some of the finest landscapes in the country and forces vast and richly fertile agricultural land supported by multiple river systems. Within this mix is its rich diversity. The character and economic conditions of this ethnic and cultural diversity is defined in the main by their environment. The Northeast is a picture of rugged and hostile trains in especially parts of Taraba, Adamawa and Borno states. As a consequence, hundreds of communities are hard to reach and alienated on matters of development. In parts of Yobe and Borno, invasive desert environment moves out scores of people and takes over their settlements. Nigeria's Northeast is also emerging from the effects of over a decade of insurgency. It is an upheaval that created mass dislocation, loss of livelihoods and loved ones. Against the background of their peculiar situations, the six states in the Northeast identify with the programs of the Community and Social Development Project CSDP as a workable pathway to addressing their challenges of poverty and social infrastructure. This program is a partnership between the federal government and the World Bank, and it is about building new natural resources and infrastructure or rehabilitating them. By design, the program targets poor and vulnerable communities in the Northeast and adapts a simple paradigm, the principle of bottom-up approach to development initiatives. The CSDP approach, which is centered on community-driven development, where the groups, the poor, the poor, uh, the vulnerable groups and the poor people in the communities are the ones who conceive of their need and the resources is put, development resources is put at their disposal and they go ahead to use it to meet their development need. This is unique. It is unique and that is the secret of the success of CSDP. In the implementation of CSDP, the federal government seeks and obtains financial assistance from the World Bank and lends it to participating states. It does so through the Federal Project Support Unit, FPSU, in actual fact, the head of the Federal Project Support Unit is identified as the National Coordinator, Community and Social Development Project. CSDP has a very organized structure, from the federal to the state, to the local government, and down to the community. And over 90% of our structure is institutionalized by law. We have legal backing. All our state's 30 participating state agencies are backed, are set up by law, passed by the State House of Assembly. So they are, uh, there is legislation and there is funding support also, both from the state government and then as it is now from the World Bank. At the local government level, we have our local government review committee. They are also backed by edit, by law set up by the local government. CSDP in the Northeast is an objective reality, a conspicuously live endeavor, the realization of dreams of many communities who hitherto believed it won't happen. The program intervenes in eight sectors, water, health, education, and transportation among many. Again, as far as the Northeast is concerned, the very poor, the vulnerable, and the internally displaced persons are at the heart of the initiative. In Yobe State, several communities live with a genuine fear of losing their dwellings to the desert. Scores have in fact been forced out by the invasive desert with no alternative place to go. The people of Clark Manor in Yusupar local government area are part of those communities. They got the story of the kind of intervention CSDP in the state gives to the poor and the vulnerable. 
they form their community association and apply through their local government office for a support to allow them build shelter belt to cover their northern plank. Their application skills through at the state office, who delay sent officer to interact with them and brief them on the procedures that are involved. Eventually, the community got the grant they have asked for after they paid 5% of the grant request. The community built a successful shelter belt of new trees that effectively protect them from desert encroachment on their northern border. The people of Kulamani did not ask for a hospital, which they really don't have. They called for shelter belt. The shelter belt has been there for three years, and it has helped in creating a buffer from the invasive desert. It is making an impact, and the people are happy. But then, there is more story to that. The shelter belt in Clark Mani is a pleasant relief for the people. It does not only stop the desert on the plank, it adds color to every land of invasive desert that once offered them no hope. Yanzu kaga koda dabba ne tana zuwa tana kiwo a wajen amma da kuma koda mutum ne da kyar zai higiye ta wajen dairayin yana haurowa sosai yana hamadan tana gusowa tana cin gidaje har ya kasance wasu na tahi suna komawa wani bangare amma da aka samu wannan yanzu a dalilin wannan nan din ya tsaya the story of it however is that clark mana is a community in a full desert cycle as they cover their northern plank, they are faced by multiple incursions of the same nature from other fronts. The good news for the community is that they are eligible to still apply for another round of grant. The government is coming up with a Marshall Plan to tackle the issue of desert encroachment. The little we can do for poor communities that are already residing in such places, we have to do it and then we we'll do it, I mean, urgently. So these people are qualified for support and we are ready uh, through our city agency to give the support anytime. You see, the, the, the beauty of what is happening now, no matter how much the World Bank brings, no matter how much in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, it will still not be enough to respond to the quantum of need and the volume of application that is coming now. So government should begin to look inwards also a little bit more. CSDP support program is noble. There is yet more character in their nobility in the way they facilitate the reintegration and resettlement of internally displaced persons. It is all in the concept of community housing, which implementation we saw in Adamawa and Yobi states. Kukareta and Yobe is a small village community, some 30 kilometers from Damaturu, the state capital. Not many people may assume that this rather sleepy settlement is host to over 1,000 internally displaced persons poor souls that were moved out of their natural environment in Yobe and Borno by insurgency. They came here in bits and pieces and were all well received. This under the tree meeting is a reflection of the journey of the IDPs and how CSDP changed their lives. Individually, they all have moving stories of closed shape escapes and struggles to live and adapt in an area totally new. Essentially, however, Kukareta opened doors for them when they most need a way out for their lives. They got an even more assuring and enduring way when they learned of CSDP's community housing and applied. They were conceded and upon payment of 5% of the total grant sum, were given grant to build their own houses. In all our uh, discussions with them, community housing became the priority number one. Their reason is that, yes, they have been displaced, they have left their places, they have found themselves in these places. What, where they are sitting, they use tent. They use the grasses, thatch, uh, roofings, and the rest. Now they want a shelter over their head, first and foremost. So almost all their priorities are centered on community housing. Today, in Kukareta, eight IDP associations of 10 people each are proud owners of two bedroom houses, complete with a kitchen and toilet, and a space for expansion. Well, I have a peculiar story of Malan Gadu from Gidram in Gujiba local government area of Yobe state. In the year 2016, Boko Haram attacked his community. Virtually every member of that community had to vacate the place and find shelter somewhere. Malangada came to this place. He settled. When he did, he had to manage life. He was able to escape with his wife and children and his bulls. But definitely, he had no means of livelihood. He had no shelter. And he is just hoping that intervention will come from heaven or from somewhere to make him survive. Today, 
Malangado is a proud owner of two bedroom house and he is living comfortably together with his wife. Another man settled us. Another man angry did I get it? Another man angry. Hurry and do. Kuma abumba manaji labari a changi na muka jorun. Akwaya lan wani loko chi suna zua suna kwali mutani. To suba da haka ba da mama mukoma wachang. Yes. Munda manang. Well, Malangado has a beautiful story to tell. He tells the story of how he has been able to escape. And he told the story of how CSDP intervention helped him to settle here and become the son of the soil. In fact, he is not thinking about going back to where he came from because he feels there is still some burning issues rising from that place. But that's not all. This man has all his family here. Only a month ago, he gave out his daughter in marriage to a community around this area. You talk of integration and resettlement. I think CSDP has helped him to achieve that. Kukareta is a classic example of the success of CSDP's community housing in the Northeast. Beneficiaries of the scheme are of both gender. Hawaii Isa Umar is a beneficiary. She migrated from Kalabalige in Borno State. She told stories of how night attack in their Julbe community scattered members of her family. She arrived Kukareta alone after having stayed in five other places but couldn't find peace. The greatest revelation is in Yobe, where uh, we are not even able to, for a, for a long time now, given the security situations, we are not even able to pay uh, direct World Bank's implementation visits. But we go to the, we go to Bono, we go to Adamawa. We've been to Gombe, Taraba, Bauchi at, on, on a regular basis. But Yobe team and the work there is the impression that the program will end in June. The program will not end in June. The program is a program of the state government, of the federal government, supported by the World Bank. The agencies that are implementing, particularly at state level, are agencies of state government established by law. The staff that are operating these projects in each of the states are staff engaged by the state government. So they will all be there after June. The agency will be there. It has its life documented in a law of the state. It will be there after June. What happens after June is that this round of financial support from the World Bank will come to a close. There has been several rounds of support. In fact, the project, as you know, is more than 10 years. So there has been rounds of financial support. The latest round of financial support will end in June. So ordinarily, we will expect that the way the project has been accepted, managed by the state government, they will continue to run it, and they might ask the World Bank for further assistance, in addition to their own resources. It's an appeal we'll continue to make. We do not think that this June 2020 should be the end of CSDP. We expect that this project should be sustained and more resources committed from the federal government and from donor partners towards providing this development and meeting the needs of people at that level. Not just their social uh, and infrastructure need, but also some form of socioeconomic need, livelihood support need that can percolate and, and, and trickle down to the poor so that they'll have even resources to send children to school, have resources to attend uh, uh, the health centers beyond the base transfer and even the conditional cash transfer that we are currently getting from support from the World Bank, I mean from the federal government and of course World Bank and other supports. If the project goes beyond June, there is hope for the hundreds of communities who applied to be supported by CSDP, but whose request is still pending. With some months of the closure deadline zone, some communities stand a chance of still getting a project of their own in their community. Government has clearly stated this ambition. I want to sustain the gains of this program like CSDP and others. I want to build and scale on these gains. I want to lift 
100 million people out of poverty. And I also want to do this with an overall uh, human capital development agenda. So the institution is being set up. The systems are being developed. The programs are out there, like CSDP. CSDP ends in June. What next for it? Our ambition is to continue on the gains, to scale. And then we are when we are consolidating on this gain and scaling, what is the implications for the government? The government is then to fund it. Even if the CSDP programs end June, the National Coordinator CSDP through states and local government can adopt the CSDP model in delivering development programs to their people since it proves a workable paradigm. He is not alone on these lines though. This paradigm has been on the board now for more than 10 years. The paradigm of actually putting the resources in the hands of the poor to be on the driver's seat and manage the interventions by themselves and get the services for themselves over time, which is very strong in terms of ownership, very strong in terms of maintenance and all of that. It has been there for quite some time. I think it is high time that the state government begins to expose this paradigm to other sources of partnership. There are philanthropic organizations that can put their resources to a, in this same program as well. There are private sector organizations that wants to do co corporate uh, relations and can put resources in this same structure. In fact, it is possible to coalesce many more of the interventions that government is doing on a uh, supply-driven perspective into this paradigm and make sure that the leadership, the ownership, the commitment of this service delivery is by the beneficiaries uh, themselves. Given our field experience, CSDP has proven to be a critical model that not only touches lives, but also changes them. It proves to be a versatile endeavor too, with visibility across all areas in the Northeast and commended everywhere. It is like an appreciative community member in Ngombe, next to government. CSDP has touched more lives in the Northeast.